Earlier this week, Donald Trump, flanked by a group of coal miners, signed an executive order aimed at reversing Barack Obama's attempts to limit carbon emissions, called the Clean Power Plan. My administration is putting an end to the war on coal. We're going to have clean coal, really clean coal. With today's executive action, I am taking historic steps to lift the restrictions on American energy, to reverse government intrusion, and to cancel job-killing regulation. Really clean coal aside, here in the Boston area, advocates maintain the climate change fight is not over yet. As Adam Riley tells us, they say local action is the wave of the future. For environmentalists in the Boston area, Donald Trump's presidency is a call to arms. I think people are just angry and really fired up and more than ever see what's at stake. Matija Merkasic is a Harvard senior. The day after Trump signed an executive order aimed at unleashing the coal industry, she and other activists from DeVest Harvard blocked the entrance to University Hall calling for an end to coal-related investments. This direct action has been planned for a while, but it certainly fits into the larger narrative of kind of a resuscitation of the coal industry, which we think is going to be fundamentally damaging. Trump's ability to mobilize his opponents was also on display at the State House, where the head of UMass Lowell's Climate Change Initiative discussed how to predict the impact of new state-level policies. Afterward, Juliet Rooney Varga told me that Massachusetts can play a crucial role in the Trump era. Massachusetts is a leader in energy efficiency and in innovation. So it seems to me like this is a natural place to really lead. And that's what I want to see. The Clean Power Plan was a good step, but it wouldn't have been enough. Now that the federal Clean Power Plan is dead, the state is weighing a pitch for new fees on carbon-based fuels, which would later be refunded equally to every mass resident. Senator Mike Barrett says his bill is based on sound economics. So we can actually itemize all the secondary effects of burning a gallon of gasoline, the effects on your community's health, and the global warming effects. Let's build their price, the price we all pay through health insurance premiums anyway, into the original price of the gallon of gasoline. Barrett's bill would raise the cost of a gallon of gas by $0.08 cents to start and $0.36 cents after several years. Given the stakes, he believes that's a bargain. If we're going to save the planet and save ourselves, we are going to have to engage in full pricing. And, says Cindy Lupe, the New England head of Clean Water Action, there are plenty of other possibilities if Massachusetts really wants to push back against the president, like increasing energy efficiency and getting more ambitious with renewable energy. While the impact might be limited if it's only Massachusetts, she says it's time to think bigger. States gathering together uh, have always led the way, and the impact at times is, is really significant. We think nationally because that's how we're organized, but uh, states, and particularly states with population centers like Massachusetts, can have a really significant impact. And given the way President Trump is approaching climate change, a renewed focus on local action may be the only option Massachusetts activists have. Adam Riley, WGBH News.